Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna make a Razer keyboard lighting video that I've been meaning to make for a really long time. What it is is another Razer keyboard lighting design from Puff and Plukey's top 15 chroma lighting effects video. And this design has actually been requested by several of my viewers. And it's really not a complicated design at all to make. So we'll get right into a step-by-step -step instructional video to show you guys exactly how this design is made. And I'm also going to add in a couple technical upgrades to this design, which is a caps lock indicator as well as a num lock indicator. And I'm gonna show you guys step-by-step -step how that is done as well. I will provide you guys with a download link in the description below where you guys can go to my website and instantly download this keyboard lighting design. Please, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and bell icon if you already haven't. That way you guys don't miss out on future keyboard lighting videos. We're gonna get right into this one. This one is Chromium Blue. All right guys, so here we go with the Chromium Blue keyboard lighting design. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to come down here on the bottom left and we're going to click Wave to add a new wave layer. And then we're going to click on this spectrum cycling layer and just hit this trash can to delete that. With this wave layer, what we are going to do is we're going to create that white background that you see that kind of pulses. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control and scroll wheel in and just focus on my keyboard for right now. And what I'm going to do to create that pulsing look is I'm going to select all of my keys on my keyboard. I'm going to click on my color gradient drop down here and I'm going to select this middle three node color pattern here. So you can see there's three nodes, one, two, three, and that looks good right there. I'm going to drag this one in a little bit as well as the third one and just kind of pinch off that middle node a little bit. So there we go, just like that. And what I'm going to do with these outside nodes here is I'm going to make them a gray color. So I'm just going to pull it to something that I think looks good. That looks good right there. So I got 474747 for a hex code. And you can copy this code and paste it into the last one. Or you can just enter in that code 474747 and you have the same color. Now with this middle node, what we're going to do is make a white color. So... Um, for a hex code, it's going to be six Fs. And now you can see on my keyboard, I just have a regular wave uh, going to the right, or at least on my preview, I have uh, a single wave going to the right. I'm gonna check the split option, and that's going to start dividing it out in the middle of my keyboard. And it gives you something very similar to what you're seeing on the original design. So if I go ahead and hit save here, you can see my actual keyboard starts to light up and does something very similar to what you see on the design itself. Now what I did for my other Chroma enabled devices, if I hold control and start to scroll wheel out, I can hold control and press zero and it kind of zooms everything into a window here. What I did with my other devices is I copied one of these affected keys. So what I did is I held control and I just selected all my other peripheral lighting options besides my keyboard and I pasted that effect in there and you can see how it messes with the keyboard lighting you see how the keyboard is all messed up and it doesn't have the divide anymore that's because it's all the same um, same exact color like the gradient is exactly the same so if we change this last digit in this node by one value if I erase that and put 748, you can see the keyboard goes back to being regular. And it also is pretty much in sync with the rest of the lighting options as well. So you have to make your peripheral lighting different technically than your keyboard. That way your keyboard can still have this effect. So that takes care of our gray slash white background color and now we're going to get into the slow ripple that you see on this design to add the ripple on the bottom left go ahead and click on your ripple effect layer it's going to add a brand new ripple layer and what we're going to do with this ripple is we're actually going to select 
all of our key lighting options that exist, except I'm going to deselect my mouse, okay? Because I don't want the ripple to go off when I'm clicking my mouse. Also, to make this work to where it doesn't have the mouse affecting it, we have to click on our start, our playback, start, and change it from on press to on selected keys. That makes it to where a ripple only happens when you press the selected keys that you see selected right now. Also with this ripple layer, I'm going to reduce the width percentage from 300% down to 200% just because the ripple looks like it might be a little bit less. I'm going to click on my color gradient drop down and we're just going to do a single color gradient, which is what he has on his design. And for this blue color, I'm just going to select manually select something in the middle between light and blue, something like this here. What I chose is 0328 FF. That looks good. I'm going to click off of that. And I'm gonna reduce my speed from 10 all the way down to two and give it a really slow ripple. Everything else here looks good. I'm gonna hit save. So now when I go ahead and press a key, you can see I have something that's very similar, if not identical to what you see in the original Razor Synapse 2 design. Now I'm just gonna add a couple of technical upgrades to this design. I'm gonna add a caps lock indicator and a num lock indicator. For this, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a brand new wave layer. I'm gonna click on this wave layer and I'm gonna select my caps lock key. And I'm gonna control V and paste that white wave that I had from earlier on this key, except I'm going to change it to uh, a blue color like what I had before. So I'm just gonna use this color here. I'm gonna copy this code. I'm gonna paste it in my last node. So you can see I have the dark blue there. And now I'm gonna paste that into my middle node as well. And then I'm gonna just drag that middle node to be brighter. Like this. And that looks good. I'm going to hit save. I forgot to change the playback. So what you want to do for this to be a caps lock indicator is on playback under start, you want to make that to on selected keys. And you want this to end after it's selected again. So you want it to end on selected keys as well. So I'll hit save there. So you have start on select keys and end on selected keys. So here you can see my caps lock is not blue. And if I press my caps lock, my ripple goes off, but my caps lock also stays blue. You can see that. Now if I press it again, it'll do the ripple effect and the white, the blue will go away as well. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the num lock. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this effect and I'm gonna paste it into my numlock key, but I have to make it a little bit different because if I keep it the same, if I press caps lock, you can see now my numlock key stays on as well. So what I have to do is I have to make this key separate. So I'll click on this node. I'll just change this by a digit, change that to eight, and that's it. So now you have a separate caps lock indicator as well as a num lock indicator. And that's it for this design, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this keyboard lighting design video. I really hope it helped you guys learn something and helped you guys get this keyboard lighting effect on your devices. 
If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and bell icon. That way you guys don't miss out on future keyboard lighting videos. If you guys have any ideas of any designs you would like to see on your keyboards, please feel free to leave a comment down below in the comment section on this YouTube video. And you can also contact me on my social media accounts, Twitter, Instagram, and I even stream on Twitch every once in a while. Come on in there and tell me what you guys have in mind for a keyboard lighting design. Thank you guys very much, and I'll see you guys in the next video.